They're glad to be here to visit and all those things, I'm sure. <laughs> um, thank you so much, and it is great to see you back here. And uh, I just let me just start with the fact that the Veterans Administration Benefits Administration is really experiencing a backlog of claims. We talked about this last night, which I know really got worsened during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then, of course, with the passage of the PACT Act last year, the number of benefits uh, veterans seeking benefits is on, only going to rise. So. I wanted to ask you, if confirmed, what are you going to do to make sure that veterans are receiving timely responses to their claims? Uh, Senator Murray, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, you know, when I was here about 10 years ago as a senior advisor for benefits, I was here when uh, General Hickey led the transformation through a series of people process technology uh, transformational efforts to include moving from a paper to a paperless process. We're building on that foundation that's been laid we're driving new people process technology solutions, and we're importantly focusing on both the veteran and the employee experience. So number one, with people, we are uh, undertaking a significant hiring expansion. Over the last year, we've hired uh, an additional 2,000 employees. Thanks to the PACT Act, uh, we're able to hire another 1,900, of which we've been able to bring on board about 65%. Just this past week, we had three separate hiring fairs. We had hundreds of people in St. Petersburg, Florida, Waco, Texas, and Los Angeles, and we were able to make hundreds of job offers as a result of those uh, job fairs. We're continuing that effort. We're also continuing to invest in training so that as the new employees come in, that they're brought up to speed and they're able to make timely and accurate decisions. The second piece is focused on process. Uh, we're concerned about uh, how we can uh, bring more efficiency to the process and overdevelopment is one of the main concerns we have. We don't want to send veterans out to get an exam if they don't need it. That takes time away from their busy lives, potentially results in them losing income. So we're looking at efforts uh, like overdevelopment. And then third, I would add, uh, we're also employing technology. So we're in the early stages of leveraging automated decision support, but I think this is the real potential game changer as we move forward. It's gonna give our employees more tools to make more decisions more quickly, accurately, and equitably across the system. And I think it'll help us ensure that we don't have to linearly increase uh, employee staffing to meet the growing demand. Okay, excellent. Um, the VA Office of Inspector General and Government Accountability Office have issued several reports over the last couple of years detailing the mishandling of veterans' military sexual trauma claims. In a 2021 report, the Inspector General estimated that about 57% of denied claims related to MST were not processed correctly. Talk to us about what plans you have to work on the MST claims to make sure that veterans are receiving the care that they deserve. Yeah, I really appreciate you raising that question and, and your leadership on this issue. Uh, MST claims are uh, some of the most horrific issues that we have to deal with. We have to deal with them with the sensitivity and the urgency that they demand and uh, do so in, uh, in an appropriate manner. One of the things that we've done to try to improve the accuracy and the consistency of our decisions is by consolidating the processing of those individual claims. They are quite complex, and oftentimes it's hard for the veteran to provide sufficient evidence for us to make a decision. So we're working to ensure that we have our most qualified, uh, experienced staff who can solely focus on MST. Uh, and second, we're also uh, going to be looking at the, the broader evidentiary standards to understand how we can make it easier for veterans and operate with sensitivity so we don't re-traumatize veterans as they're going through this process. Okay, I'll be following this closely, so look forward to hearing more from you as you go through that. And finally, let me just say something. You won't be surprised to hear that um, there are two million women veterans living in the United States today, and they are the fastest growing demographic. This is something I've long cared about, but I have to say I'm still hearing from a lot of women veterans that they're not aware of or taking advantage of the benefits they've earned. How do we deal with that? I think uh, it's, it's a really important question, and we need to do more. Uh, since I've come into this organization back in 2021, I've observed that VA is more forward-leaning with respect to outreach. We're getting the word out. 
We're trying to partner with veteran service organizations, with state departments of veterans affairs, with county veteran service organizations, uh, with the Center for Women Veterans. And importantly, we need to make sure that we're listening, uh, we're asking questions, we're listening to women veterans and we're responding. Because the, the tools that we use to provide information and support to uh, certain parts of the veteran population may not work here, so we're partnering with the Veteran Experience Office to apply human-centered design and make sure that we take those insights and we use them to inform how we provide outreach and connect female veterans with the support and the services that they've earned. Thank you very much. I look forward to supporting this nomination, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.